recorded this so you have it later okay so there are different motivators that drive people and enneagrams and their personality types help you to determine that so let me go on some of this is going to be an eye chart i have to admit i cut and pasted it from a website um, but you have it so you have access to it and if you put the full screen which i will when we go over this uh, there are here we go uh, there are uh, different ways to interpret this so there are different personality types and people make up nine different personality types it's been modified a little bit but today for the 21st century each type each number that a person has is a dominant personality type but with that you have wings so if you have a number the number on either side could potentially be your wing and your wing is what refines your personality it helps kind of give it a little bit more detail than just a straight number so for example seven wing eight would be you are a enthusiast a number seven but you also have dominant characteristics and again we'll talk about that in just a little bit and each number points to a different person's growth and a stressor and here's why i think enneagram is so interesting mbti and disc and other personality types even strength finder are very static it is who you are this is the person that you've become this is your main personality but the enneagram is very dynamic in that you have a certain number or a certain personality type. And then when you're stressed, you have a different personality type. Or if you're in a growth mode, you're relaxed, you have a different personality type, a different number that you tend to slide toward. And it's fascinating because again, it's dynamic. In the environment, your personality, your attitude influences how you, how you behave. And that's really what makes this one so much different. So with that, I'm gonna just kind of get into it a little bit here. This is what the Enneagram personality type, uh, chart looks like. So you have three different colors. Blue is eight, nine, and one. Each number is a personality type. And that means it's just like intuition. It's just there's something about you. It's just part of who you are. It's an intuition perspective. That's what drives you. So they call it gut. So it's doing. And then two, three, and four are red. And that's heart. It's very emotional. It's a feeling perspective. And then seven, eight, nine are a very thinking or head perspective, and they're green. And you can see that the different triads um, all are, they come from different motivators in your personality. So your personality type, the way you exhibit, are either gut, head, or heart, which may tie back to Myers-Briggs. So the thinking versus feeling. All right? It may not, may not, but it may align to those. So it's interesting to take a look at. Second, there are arrows all over the place. And I have now seen this graph with arrows going in both directions. So either it goes to the number or away from the number, and it's a challenge. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But those arrows represent your stressor or your growth from that number that your dominant number is. Remember also the number on either side of your number could be potentially a wing and will help refine your personality. And so it's very unique in that regard that there's always something going on the environment influences you how you feel about a situation influences you etc so if you take the test which is a snapshot of the test when i was taking it you put in your check boxes to accurate or not accurate inaccurate etc and you come up with you get at the end of this whoop, you get this and this is mine so this was me taking the test and this is what came out and you can see that my two is pretty high my nine is pretty high my four is pretty high and then the others maybe one and six not so much right so the different personality types that are there and you also get with the output of this i didn't pay for any of this so it's going to ask you if you want to pay for more you don't have to right? this is just raw and, and it was the best test i could find on enneagrams online for free so you can see here i'm a, definitely a two i'm a 98 percent match my nine is pretty high too. I'm a 94% match. And it gives you a snapshot of each different personality type. So you're a two. So in my case, I'm a two. So I'm a 98% match. I'm the giver or the helper. Two is one where you like, they find ways they can be helpful to others and they can be loved and belong. So it's a sense of identity from helping other people. Now, if you look at my one and my three, you can see here, my three is bigger than my one. So in this case, I'm what's considered a two wing three. And what does that mean? Well, my, if you read three, three is known as the achiever, is the accomplisher. Threes want to be successful and admired by other people, and they're very conscious of their public image. So for me, take the two and the three together. I'm a helper who wants to help other people. I find identity in helping other people, and I want to be respected and appreciated. 
So that's really who I am. Translation, if I'm working on a project with somebody, I'm willing to sacrifice the success of the project just to maintain the relationship because the relationship is more important to me than, than getting the work done. And you'll see a lot of this as we continue on, that there's the wings and how they're described, the directions and the arrows, the growth versus the uh, stressors as we go on. But this is what you'll see. You'll see a snapshot like this, an image, a graph, and then you'll see this. So a description of each one. Now notice I'm also a high nine, and nine is a peacemaker. Nines like to keep a low profile and let the people around them set the agenda. Well, that's very similar to two. I mean, somebody who likes to give and be helpful, but also kind of wants to sit in the back and not be noticed. So not necessarily the president, but the vice president. You know, something like that. Somebody who does a support role and is really good at it. I'm also a decently high four, which is the individualist. Fours want to be unique and live life authentically and are highly attuned to their emotional experience. Well, again, I think that's trained, right? So working in emotional intelligence and kind of playing with your emotions and kind of uh, holding on to it, you know, being self-management, being self-aware, I think that ties to this. Now, most women, not all women, but most women are naturally twos. And the reason is because a lot of women are very maternal, especially moms that have children. And so that when, later in life, they typically will come out to be a two because they want to be that helper, that person that helps their children succeed. But that may not necessarily be the case, which is why I enjoyed working with students, working with people your age, because you haven't quite gotten to that point in life yet. So you can see kind of what your personality is right now. These do change over time. Sometimes it'll be more drastic than others. Sometimes it'll be more subtle, but you kind of get a feel for what personalities are like. So here are the nine personalities. A one is the reformer, also known as the perfectionist. My wife is a one. Rational, idealistic type, principled, pur purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionistic. This is the person who says, I can make it just a little bit better. I can make it just a little bit better. Um, I asked my wife once, I said, do you hear a voice in your head at telling you that you can make something a little bit better or you can do something better? And she said, just one voice. I usually have like five or six. It's an audience telling me I can do something a little bit better. Her mantra in life is the enemy of good is better. Because sometimes when you try to make something better, you end up making it worse. And so that's the idea of the perfectionist. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's trying to make the best of the situation given your resources. What is the ideal? What is the best solution? Number two, as I talked about before, is the helper, the caring interpersonal type, demonstrative, generous, people-pleasing, possessive. There is a... I want to be your best friend. And sometimes it can come across as jealousy when you have a different best friend and not me as a best friend. So I want to still be appreciated even though you're quote unquote seeing other people. If you, um, you're working with other people. So there's that possessive component that's there for twos. Three is the achiever. So three is success oriented, pragmatic, adaptive, excelling, driven, image conscious, right? So the person that can succeed at doing what he or she can do. Four is the individualist. It's more sensitive and withdrawn. The fours are the types that are self-absorbed and temperamental, but they're dramatic. So it's kind of the, it's the me. I'm kind of the person that sets myself apart from everyone else. I think I typically don't want to be part of the crowd. I certainly don't want to be the main center of attention, but I want to be helpful and supportive in that way. But it's also, I have my own unique abilities. And so um, the creativist is also here too. The, the creative, the person who is very, uh, dramatic, somebody who's very innovative, somebody who has a lot of different creative abilities. Artists are this way. <clears throat> I'm going to guess for those that know him that Dr. Casey Hayes is probably in the four. So just somebody who's very kind of has his perspective, his way of doing things, his there, his way. But he's written two books. He's written numerous papers. He comes up with various uh, choir performances. He trains students how to sing and play different instruments. I mean, he's just talented that way, very creative. Five is the investigator. Five is I want to know why life works. I'm always thinking, the researcher, always thinking, about how does this tie to this? How does this, why do people do this? Why is it that we wear masks and we're told to social distance, but just normally we don't want to be. We just don't want to be socially distanced, right? So why is that and why do we have that? So the investigator is kind of the in-between, right? So it's someone who's always looking for that to try to figure out why is that? Why do people do this? Why do people act the way that is? Why is it that the sky is blue? Is it really reflective of the oceans from the sun or not? Let me see if I can do some tests on this. Let me see. So secretive, isolated, again, I need to kind of be isolated so I can do my tests, I can do my experiments. 
Number six, the loyalist. Now, number six is interesting. This is the committed security oriented type. Engaging, responsible, anxious, and suspicious. Now, what does that mean? The six is the worst case scenario person. If I go through a plan, if I'm going to go travel, let's say to, I'm in Dallas right now. So um, I, if I'm going to travel to Dallas, I look at my itinerary and think, what can possibly go wrong? What's the worst case situation? I lose my luggage. I miss my plane. My plane doesn't fly out. I can't make my connecting flight. I miss my, my um, sorry, my presentation that I'm giving. Um, what's the worst that can happen? And then try to prevent it from happening. Now, sixes are important. Sixes, it's kind of the naysayer. It's kind of the pessimistic person. And so we typically look at them as being negative. But they have a role of importance. There was a study in 2016 of bonobo monkeys in Africa. And there was one family of monkeys that were or bonobos that were uh, together. And what happened is the psychiatrist took some of these sixes from the personalities of these bonobos and they removed them and said, okay, these are the ones that are worrying. These are the ones that are gathering food while the others are having fun. These are the ones who are kind of doing a count of their other members of the tribe, making sure everything's okay, making being aware of the society, I'm sorry, the surroundings, always seeing what's out there. So the psychiatrists took away these sixes. And what happened when they went back to see what happened to society was the ent entire society was wiped out. And the reason why the entire village, or shouldn't call it village, the entire grouping of these bonobos were, were eliminated is because the sixes who thought worst case scenario, where are the predators? When they took them away, nobody was doing that. So the predators eventually attacked them and wiped them out. So the loyalist has this worst case scenario pessimistic perspective, but it's security driven. It's letting other people know, hey, here's the worst case situation. Why don't you do this? This is my wife telling my three-year-old, please put your life jacket on. Even though my three-year-old can swim, he never know, just in case, put the life jacket on, right? So that's very much the loyalist that thinks that way all the time. Number seven is the enthusiast. It's the fun-loving person. My wife calls this one the dad personality. This is the spontaneous, versatile, distractible, yet somehow scatterbrained. So this is the, some of the professors you probably had are enthusiasts. They're just very full of energy and full of life. And they want to talk about something, but at the same time, they're very scatterbrained. They don't organize things. They don't grade things well, et cetera. So that's very much the enthusiast. I've had bosses like this before, and maybe you have too. Number eight is the dominant one. It's challenger. It's the CEO. So the powerful, dominating type, self-confident, decisive, willful, confrontational, they may not be necessarily uh, antagonistic, but they're very direct. So we talked about dominance as far as disk communication last week or earlier this week. This is the challenge. This is the one that says, why? Why not? Tell me why we should do these things. And if they don't get their way, we well, need to explain as to why I'm not getting my way. So very direct, very confrontational, not, not afraid of getting into fights, just very dominant personality types, very self-confident, often thinking that their perspective is right. And number nine is the peacemaker. This is the person that's willing to step back and say, you believe in this, and then you believe in this, and when I believe in this. Now, what do we all have in common? You know, how can we move forward and agree? I don't want to just agree to disagree. I want to keep finding commonalities between all of us. So this is a person who's receptive, listens to everyone's perspectives, reassuring, encouraging, agreeable, very complacent, uh, wanting to have that harmony between everybody's personalities. And what you'll see is when we get to these individual numbers, you see a listing of a bunch of people, celebrities who have these. And one of these that's recommended for the peacemaker is Barack Obama. This was him as a president, always wanting to get everybody's side, everybody's perspective together and moving forward. Now, the problem with the peacemaker is that sometimes in pursuing everybody's information, you don't get anything done because you're spending time trying to get everybody's input. Sometimes you need to make an executive decision. Sometimes you need to make something, you need to make a decision now. And it's hard to do that when you're trying to play peacemaker with everybody because some people have different personalities, different perspectives, different needs and wants, et cetera. All of these I'm gonna show you in the subsequent pages are at this link, the enneagraminstitute.com. So again, this is probably the most widely taken test. I think the test is $70. Uh, if you wanna know more, you can do that at this site. Otherwise, I just, I'm okay with working with the free one for class. All right.
So I'm going to put this, oh, it is the full screen. And you can see how it's an eye chart. It's really hard to read. But I did this intentionally because I figure that way you can look at it in full screen and you can see just a little bit of what this is like. So notice the graph up top. This is the one, the perfectionist, the reformer. Notice it says if you're in a growth mode, you become more of a seven, more of an enthusiast. If you are a four, uh, so you're in a stressed mode, you're going to become more of a four, which is that creative, um, more withdrawn individual. Right, this is the person who's the expressor. Your basic fear is becoming corrupt or evil or defective. So you strive to be a perfectionist and yet everything you touch seems to be broken. Like you're better off not having the number one around. Right? Enneagram with a nine wing, which is the peacemaker, is the idealist. It's looking at the best possible situation. So the perfectionist, how do I make myself better? How do I make other people better? How do I make the situation better? What is the best solution? The advocate's the other way when you become a one, two. So it's the person who is the encourager, the person who is there on your side. Remember, the two is the helper. So the one, two is a perfectionist, but how do I help you the best? In other words, what can I do for you today? What would help you the most? Very much the advocate. Uh, key motivations, always wanting to be right. You've ever seen the, the phrase or the t-shirt wearing it says, I'm silently correcting your grammar. This is the number one. This is the one who's the perfectionist trying to make everything the best. Now, if you get down to the second to last bullet point, that's why I put so much information on the slide. It says, when moving in the direct direction of disintegration, stress, ones become moody and irrational, fours. So this is the person who's withdrawn and just kind of sits back and looks at things and becomes very critical because as a perfectionist, that's what you do. If you're in a growth mode, though, if you're in direction of integration, working with other people, Critical ones become more spontaneous and joyful and healthy. It's the fun person. It's the enthusiast. That's the seven. And you can see at the bottom examples, Margaret Thatcher, Nelson Mandela, Prince Charles, Kate Middleton, Mahatma Gandhi, Pope John Paul II, Hillary Clinton, Rudy Giuliani, although, yeah, depending on your political affiliation, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, right? Uh, Thoreau. Um, so you have a bunch of people who are here that and celebrities or these famous names that are ones. So they've taken the test before and have found to be ones. All right, number two is the helper. Number two, we've talked about this a little bit. When I get mad, I get upset. Let's say I go into a restaurant and I have a reservation and they can't find it. So if I get stressed, I get upset. I become a number eight, dominant. Tell me why, why didn't you find this? I made this reservation last week. How did they get lost? It's the right time, it's the right day. Everybody's here. What are you gonna do about it? So that very strict, very dominant, very authoritative perspective, right? Become very, uh, become aggressive and dominating. However, in the other direction, they become fours, which is that emotionally aware, self-nurturing, living life healthily, um, being creative, being very helpful, being very innovative uh, in that growth mode. A basic fear of the two is not being wanted or not being loved or not being appreciated. Uh, Enneagram with a one wing as a servant, which is I'm going to help people, but I'm going to help people in a perfectionistic manner. The wing, two wing three is the host or hostess. It's the person that wants to make the situation great. So it's not necessarily being perfect, but it's again, I want to be your best friend. I really want to help out. And again, you can see a listing of people that are here. Number three is the achiever. The achiever is the person who's self-assured and attractive, ambitious, competent, energetic, um, very conscious, highly driven for advancement. So how do I, be, how do I get, like, I set a goal and then I want to attain that goal. When stressed, you become a nine. You become like a negative, uh, a negative nine. So uh, deceitful threes become more cooperative and committed to other, I'm sorry, uh, they become disengaged and apathetic. So it's kind of that opposite of the peacemaker. I don't really want anything to do with you, right? So I'm, I want to do it all myself. I'm driven to be self-centered in that way. A growth, however, it becomes a six. So it's that loyalist, but uh, becoming committed to others, staying healthy. How do I find security for you? How do I help you out in your situation? How do I make our situation a lot more secure? It's kind of balancing a portfolio or helping you clean up your house or how do I help you with whatever? So, so it's driving and making people a little bit more um, kind of looking for the worst possible situations and how do we improve those? So a two wing, a three with a two wing is the charmer. So it's the person who's the achiever, but I want to bring you with me. Right. The professional, 
is the two, the three wing four. It's the person who is an achiever, but at the same time, very creative. So I put a lot of energy and effort into my work and I'm here to make things better. So you kind of show your true side and your creativity and innovation at the same time. So the number four is the individualist. The individualist is the person who's very self-aware, sensitive and reserved, emotionally honest, creative and personal, but can be moody and self-conscious. So again, the number four is there withholding themselves, being vulnerable and defective. The four wing three is the aristocrat. So somebody who is very talented and very charmed and has a good sense of creativity, but at the same time is somebody who is very reserved, right? So it's kind of the, the person who is the upper class. So almost looking down on other people, being aloof. Number four with five uh, is the bohemian. So this is somebody who is very talented with their abilities. Again, very creative and very, uh, very good with what they do. But at the same time, they uh, are the person who is a little bit more free thinking, um, able to help out other people, but not as much. Um, really kind of focused on being very free spirited, right? So kind of very um kind of like why do i try to figure out what am i trying to identify um how do i figure out the life how do i figure out things but using my personal gifts to do so um the moving in the direction of stress you become more of a two so kind of somebody that uh does not want to deal with people so or becoming overly involved and becoming clean and somebody in that direction uh, if you become a one so you become more perfectionistic as a four the individualist becomes more objective and principled in a healthy way so somebody who is there to uh, kind of point out other people's mistakes and try to help them, help, help them grow. So much like a one wing two, or a, uh, yeah, a one wing two. So you can see again, this, the bunch of people who were celebrities or who are celebrities that have something like this, that have personality type. Number five is the investigator. Again, smart, insightful, curious, wanting to know the way where the world works. How do we solve things? What are the relationships? independent, inventive, and innovative, but can be preoccupied and become very aloof. A, four, a five wing, four wing becomes the iconoclast, so somebody that kind of disagrees with everybody. Uh, the five, six wing is the problem solver, because you're, again, you're looking for the worst case situation. A stressed person at a five is a hyperactive and scattered, right? But a growing person at a five is very self-confident and decisive. Right, so kind of a um, direct, but also knowing how to plan your goals, knowing how to stretch yourself, et cetera. So sixes are loyalists. Again, this is the worst case situation, hardworking, responsible, trustworthy. Uh, they, in, under stress, they become a three, which is more competitive and arrogant. And number nine, they become very much a peacemaker. So become very relaxed and optimistic and willing to help other people, help out situations. Um, I've seen sixes become nines before, and it's fascinating because it's almost like asking, who, who are you? You know, when did this happen? Because somebody who's more looking for the worst case situation becomes very um, willing to throw that away just for the moment because they're in a relaxed state. And it's very interesting just to see how that personality shift works. So these are people who are, uh, they're troubleshooters. A Six wing five is the defender. So it's somebody that's willing to help out and defend their perspectives and defend their causes. A six wing seven is somebody who's very the buddy. It's one of one, somebody who wants to be your friend, somebody who is very fun loving and energetic, but at the same time wants to, wants to solve problems, right? So somebody who wants to solve your problems as well as just his, his or her problems. So you see this challenge that's there too. And again, more famous names at the bottom. Seven's the enthusiast. I won't go into full details of these last three, but you kind of get a feel where it's more of a gut feel. So after seven, you go to eight, nine, and one. Seven is still heady too. Sevens are the fun enthusiast. It's the optimistic, versatile, extroverted, spontaneous person, right? High-spirited, practical, but sometimes they can be overextended. Sometimes they can be very scattered and undisciplined. So energy, the fun, it's the um, bright, shiny object person. Oh, I definitely want this. And sometimes the bright, shiny object is not the thing you should be going to, right? So that's part of it. The entertainer is the seven wing eight, uh, sorry, seven wing six. So somebody who is a loyalist, a troubleshooter, but also can use their abilities to be fun and have fun and entertain other people. The seven wing eight is the realist. 
So this is, here's our global strategy. How do we fix this? Like, what's the, what's the worst case scenario? Um, sorry, what is the, let's make ourselves fun, but at the same time, I want to be dominant. I want to be able to help, uh, help our strategy. I want to be able to, to figure out why and, and not be afraid of conflict. So sevens end up going to be uh, perfectionistic and critical when they're stressed. So that's the perfectionist and the reformer at one, but can also be at five. So very um, focused and fascinated by life. So uh, very much wanting to understand why things are and use their fun-loving energy to put into that. Eights are challengers. Eights becoming twos are scary. I'm sorry, eights becoming fives are scary. Uh, these are dominant people that typically are very secretive and fearful. I often see this as being the unethical manager, maybe the narcissist. So somebody that wants answers right now, but at the same time, is going to forego people for it. So trying to figure out what the truth is. A eight via two is um, just loving life. So open-hearted and caring. Again, wanting to help other people, but being so very direct. Uh, eight wing seven is the maverick, so it's the wild card. So it's the enthusiast, but somebody who's dominant. And then the eight wing nine is the bear. I'm not sure I agree with that description. It's more of a person who is dominant, yet at the same time wants to help other people. Some like protective, I can see that. Very uh, wanting to help people could be a bear version. But to me, bear is also very aggressive. So I'm not sure I agree with that 100%. They want to be self-reliant. The problem with the challenger is they want to protect themselves. So, I'm sorry, yeah. They're afraid of being harmed or controlled by other people. So my independence is valued highly. And then nine is the peacemaker. So again, it's kind of looking at a, I'm anxious and worried six. And a growing nine um, is very energetic and self-developing, wanting to help other people. Right. So you see a lot of helpful and help people relationships here. And I went over this really fast because there's, I mean, you could, we could spend half a session on each one of these, and how people grow. But again, the most important number on this presentation in this test is yours. So all the others really aren't as relevant. Really, it's understanding who you are. And the goal of an Enneagram is to understand how, what your personality type is and then how you can grow. And when you get stressed and you become, like a sour version of yourself, then how do you mindfully stop that? So that self-management in emotional intelligence, that self-awareness, how do you manage to get there and become more of the nine or become more of the two or the more of the eight that you were supposed to be? And so you don't fall into those traps of being regressive. But really it's about developing yourself. Now, like I said, again, I went through that pretty quickly and there's, there's more information on the website I put up on here if you go to that site and pull them up. But I wanted as a quick overview for you to see how the different personalities work. So if I could go back to this slide here, right? So here are the first five personality types. This is what they're like. And then the second four are here. So here's what you can see as far as, and what's fascinating about this also is that once you figure out your number and you can identify other people, now it may not be healthy, healthy to pigeonhole them into a number, right? But you can kind of see how if you're an eight, how you might interact with a one how you might interact with a four, how you might interact with a seven, and how they're very different. And you can see how an eight person who's a wing, eight wing nine is very different than an eight wing seven. If you're an eight wing seven or vice versa, that how people who are similar to you aren't exactly you. And that's why, because they have a different angle or a different perspective on what that dominant personality type is. So I've gone through this a lot very quickly. And again, I want you to see an overview of it. If you haven't taken the test, go ahead and take the assessment and then figure out who you are. And again, help develop who you are. At this point, I want to open up for any questions, any thoughts on this. Now, I have had Enneagram training a little bit. I'm not an expert at it, but I've had training and taken the assessment. And I, I think that was an hour and a half of just simple going through this. Now, I think I went through this in closer to a half hour. So it's been, there's been a lot more than just what you may have experienced or what you would experience. So any questions? If not, just think about, try it out. Try out your Enneagram test. See what number you come up with. See what your, see what your figure is like this. 
and then trying to figure out, so what is your wing? And is this true? Like when you become stressed, do you become a different personality type? Or when you're happy and you're with your friends or you're with your family or you're experiencing a good moment of something, are you seriously a different personality type? Are you working towards something else? You must become a different person. And I'm curious to see what you have to come up with. So with that said, I will leave it here. It is Friday afternoon. It is 1130. I'm going to stop recording right now to end.